Hello, my name is Kiriath, and oh lord, we have even more stuff, more stuff to talk about, because we have an article on the return of Fabius Bile. Fabulous Bill is back, and he's looking fancy. So this article gives a little bit of background as to who he is, which I'm assuming most of you already know, but uh, I will link it in the description so you can take a look. But, more importantly, there are some rules for him as well. And I will say, before we go down to the rules, that I love this picture, because... It's kind of weird. So, <laughs> it's a bit of a. I, th I think I see. I think I see what they were going for with the uh, with the with the setup for this with like the diorama, but but to me, it very much looks like that sister of silence. I don't know whether it's the perspective of it. It looks like she's shouting at his little like his little gimp assistant. It doesn't look like she's actually going after after Fabius Bile. It looks like she's. Pointing at his mate and going, "What you? Why are you here? What are you doing?" I do. It's maybe it's just the perspective. It's because she's a little bit ahead of Bile, and Bile isn't actually looking at her. She. It looks like she's telling the little dude off. He's not actually that little, but it looks like she's telling the assistant off for messing with that Primaris corpse, as opposed to you know going after Fabius's head. It's a weird, it's a weird, it's a weird setup, but it does actually show the scale of a uh, of old Bile there quite nicely, which is which is nice. He's uh, he's got some, most definitely got some extra height on his old model for sure. I mean he's he's towering over that sister of silence by quite a, by like he's like easily a head and a bit taller than her. Although I think is his base slightly higher as well. It's a bit hard to tell. But yeah, I, th I still think he looks really good. I really like that model. It looks awesome. So let's uh, let's skip past the law bits because we know who he is. And you know, if you don't, then links in the description for this article. And uh, let's go down to his rules and his model. I mean, I, we, you know, we we've seen the model plenty, but I I will say I think as I said before, it's a proper classic reimagining of the old one. It's not too different. It's not too severely changed it's very true to it's very true to the old model in pretty much every respect it's just cleaner it's nicer there's extra detail that was not present before things like his surgical tools that are coming out of the out of his power pack are more delicate they're less clunky and less heavy you know the, everything has just been improved which i'm totally happy with definitely looking very haggard but then he has not had the easiest of times, uh, even if he is a complete and utter like mad psychopath doctor. He's still had a few issues to contend with with his own body, so we can we can understand why he might be looking a little bit old, a little bit tired at this point. But yeah, it still looks decent, and I do still like his little his little surgical assistant down there. It looks quality. So rules wise, what do we have? Well, we have a start line for a start. So, movement 6 inches, weapon skill 2, ballistic skill 3, nice. Strength 4, toughness 4, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leech of a 9, and a 3 plus save. So, nothing absolutely insane, but he has a few nice little tricks up his sleeve. So, as you can see, the Rod of Torment now gives a strength boost. So, that's a, that's, that's a cool little upgrade. So, obviously, melee weapon. Strength plus one, AP minus one, and uh, damage D3. And when resolving an attack made with this weapon against a vehicle unit, it has a damage characteristic of one. Which, is, I think, to be honest, I mean, I, that does make sense. You cannot torment a vehicle. You cannot, you, you know, you can't torture a land raider. So, yeah, that's that's fine. While Baal can also make attacks with the evil-looking Chirogen strapped to his back another word i cannot stand and borderline cannot say so the chirurgeon is obviously melee as well but it's strength four ap minus two damage one and when the bearer fights it can make three additional attacks with this weapon that's yeah so he makes five attacks let's just check we've got that correct yeah so no sorry four attacks he makes four attacks do apologize and then his Chirurgeon makes three. So he's got seven attacks going for him, which is not bad. That is not bad. Plus, 
plus, when he loses a wound, you can roll 1d6, and on a 5 plus, that wound is not lost. In addition, at the start of each of your turns, Fabius Bard regains d3 lost wounds. So he's not, I would say he's not absolutely going to wreck everyone's face in close combat, but at the same time, I don't think he should be underestimated. And he does have that ability to both ignore wounds and to regain wounds, which if you do some if you do some lucky rolls, he could be an absolute nightmare to get rid of if he manages to get into combat. Like it could be a real pain in the arse to shift, which I do I do like that. So this means he can survive longer and keep using his abilities to enhance the warriors in his army. Plus, if he's accompanied by his assistant, he gets much greater control of the outcome of his experiments. Now, I really like this. Another pair of hands. If Fabius Bard is accompanied by Surgeon Acolyte, after rolling the D3 for the Enhanced Warriors ability, you can add or subtract 1 to that roll result. So, e.g. a D3 roll could result of 3, could be a roll result of 2 or 3. So, you just get that little bit extra control. It's still it's still random, but it's a bit more, it's a bit more easily adapted. And, uh, yeah, oh yeah, and if the uh, Surgeon Acolyte is destroyed, it's ignored for the purposes of morale tests, because he's not going to give the most minute of, uh, <laughs> he's just not going to care, is he? Oh, you've killed my Acolyte, what a pity, I will just go and make another one, I'm not bothered. And uh, as as he did before, he gets to enhance a unit at the end of the movement phase, and, uh, and rolls on this table, so roll on a d3, and you either get one to the strength characteristic for that unit until the end of the battle, Toughness or attacks. So it's one plus one to whichever one you land on, the D three, and it's until the end of the battle. So yeah, I I'm liking it. I'm liking it. I'm liking the change to the rod. That's fun. I like the uh the children being able to attack as well. If you can I think if you can get him into combat with a a tasty unit, he could do some he could do some fun stuff. And overall yeah, overall, I'm I'm mostly excited to see what they do with the army of bile stuff, creations of bile even. So like his own little force that he's got, I'm really curious to see what they do with those. I would love to see like weird creations and kind of augmenting units to have more permanent changes. So rather than they're just being like a uh, like rolling for it randomly during the battle, like maybe being able to either use a command point or just flat out assign an increase to a stat at the start of the battle because they are part of you know Bile's force they are one of his creations i'm looking forward to that and i'm also looking forward to the uh the conversion opportunities that such upgrades could bring because you could do some fun stuff with that so yeah that is what we know about Fabius Bile so far for War of the Spider as I say, link to this article will be in the description so you can uh, take a look at the lore side of things if you would like to Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of uh, of these changes to him in the comments down below. Feel free to click all the things, Patreon, videos, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click it if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which is a nice way to support the channel if you want. Leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.